Not sure where to start your APUS history free response review? Well, in this video, we're going to help you out whether you're in the night before your exam or a few months out. In this video, we're going to go over 37 actionable APUS history FRQ tips to help you on your SAQ, DBQ, and LEQ. In it, there's going to be 37 actionable strategies that you're going to watch until the very end. And if you do, we'll give you three additional resources to help you out in your APUS history exam prep. This is part two of two of our AP US history video series. So if you missed our first part on five steps to writing effective AP US history FRQs, be sure to check that video out first. Other than that, we're ready to go. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna go over are 15 AP US history short answer question tips that you can start using today. This is a long video, so if at any point you need to pause, feel free to do so. We also have a link to the accompanying blog post if you prefer to read along while you listen back to this video. Our first tip when it comes to the SAQs is to remember the acronym ACE. Answer the question, cite your evidence, and then explain how your evidence relates back to the question. The second tip is to make sure that when you're using the ACE acronym that you are especially focusing in on the E. Students are often not effective at explaining their evidence because they simply restate the prompt or don't directly answer the question. The third tip when it comes to the SAQs is to practice demonstrating comprehension of historical excerpts by working on how you share ideas from different sources in your own words. Review both primary and secondary sources here. Tip four, Practice supporting the main points of your thesis, then work on supporting your minor points. Sometimes students spend so much time supporting their minor points that they miss the big picture. Tip five, be specific in your responses. It is not enough to just say something changed. You have to be specific and say things like what changed, how did it change, why might it have changed, and so on in your SAQs. Tip six relates to the last tip, which is one of the easiest ways to make sure you're being specific is by using the words because and therefore. What happens after those two words is your explanation. So by using these words, you can always make sure that you are showing the why to your reader. Tip seven, when you're trying to draw a comparison, you can use words such as whereas, in contrast to, or likewise, to cue your reader in that you are attempting to demonstrate this historical reasoning skill. Tip eight, Think of your SAQs like mini pop quiz drills. There's no need for things such as a thesis or a full-on introduction and conclusion in your SAQs. Tip nine, stick to the time period you're being asked. Sometimes students bring in outside information from beyond the time period, and this happened as recently as the 2019 exam when students actually brought in information about women's history that was not relevant to the time period being asked of them. Tip 10, when you're presented with an image to interpret or a stimulus, make sure that the information you're bringing in from class that you learned relates back to the stimulus. One way you might do that is by saying something along the lines of, this image demonstrates the concept of, say whatever the concept that you wanna say is, which is, define the concept, and then you can say, this can be seen by the, and then describe how the respective uh, image relates to the concept. Tip 11, review the geography of the colonies. A lot of times in recent years, students have confused colonies such as Pennsylvania and Maryland to be part of New England when they weren't actually part of such. Also in your review, make sure you go over what was going on in those different colonies over time. For example, things like the social issues, the political issues, or the economic issues. Tip 12 is to know your key definitions with specificity. For example, it is not enough to simply state that the New Deal and the Great Society programs helped the economy. In order to actually have earned points for understanding these two concepts, you would have had to share how the New Deal focused on the American economy after the Great Depression to combat unemployment, while the Great Society focused on setting up social support such as Medicare and Medicaid to support Americans. Tip 13, review your wars and presidents before, during, and after key wars. In the past, students have often confused World War I with World War II, as well as the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Tip 14, do not use the outcome of a government program as a difference or similarity between one another. For example, you don't wanna say that just because one program was successful, that that is a difference because that doesn't actually demonstrate that you've mastered content knowledge. 
And our last tip for the SAQs is to make sure that you do not extrapolate when it comes to interpreting something from a primary source. Students fall into this trap of using words such as always or never. These sorts of extremes are a trap and often will cost you points because it's not an applicable statement. Using those sorts of extremes are things that you want to only use if you are 100% certain about it, but otherwise it's not actually going to help you in your cause to scoring points. All right, so at this point, we've gone over 15 SAQ tips. If you found this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that like button so that we know that we're giving you good content and leave a comment as to which tip you found most helpful. Let's jump into 17 DBQ tips that you can use in your AP US history exam. As I mentioned in the prior section, if at any point we're going too quickly, feel free to pause the video and then catch up and then continue resuming play. So our first tip when it comes to the AP US history DBQs is to make sure that in your thesis, you are not just restating the prompt. You need to establish a very clear line of reasoning. And one of the easiest ways to do so is to remember the formula, although X, ABC, therefore Y. What X means is it's your counter argument or your counterpoint, ABC is your supporting evidence, and then Y is your actual argument. If you don't like that prior formula, another way to remember to make a clear defensible thesis is to use the word because or therefore. By using this, this will allow you to remember that you're actually stating a position. One of the easiest ways that you can check this is by asking yourself whether or not your thesis can be agreed or disagreed upon. So those are our first two tips. Let's jump into tip number three. The third tip is to make sure that you cover your contextualization point in your introduction of your essay. The easiest way to do so is to talk about what happened in the 50 to 100 years leading up to the time period that you're being asked and relate it back to the thesis. Remember, it's really important that for contextualization, you're talking about what happened in history beforehand in relation to the prompt of what's being asked of you. The fourth tip we have with the DBQs is to make sure that you're comfortable grouping your documents. This is a higher order thinking skill that allows you to demonstrate to your reader that you're not just going to be writing your essay by saying in document A, X, Y, Z, in document B, one, two, three, and so on. By grouping it, you're demonstrating that you're able to look at the bigger picture and the lens of what's being given to you and provide historical context as well as fluidity and coherence in your argument. The fifth tip, which relates back to grouping, is to make sure that you have clear topic sentences in your supporting paragraphs. This provides your reader with guidance as to what you're about to talk about, as opposed to falling into that trap I just mentioned, where you're just saying in document A, X, Y, Z, and so on. Tip six is that it's not enough simply to describe what is going on in the document. Remember, that's only part of the points for the evidence section. You have to actually connect what you're describing back to your thesis to advance your argument. The easiest way for you to earn the point for not only describing the document, but also linking it back to your thesis is to remember the word therefore. Here's an example. You might say XYZ, therefore ABC. XYZ is going to be the description of the document, whereas ABC is going to be the implication and support of how this relates back to your thesis. Tip eight is that many students struggle with author's point of view as well as author's purpose. Practice articulating what you believe the intention of the author was and how that might connect back to your argument. Don't fall into the trap of just saying the author has a point of view. Yes, everyone has a point of view, but why is that important? Remember to show the why. Tip nine is to know the sorts of statements that you need to make in the different categories of essays. Here are some easy ways to do so. For questions that are related to continuity and change over time, try to incorporate at least one however statement at the end of every body paragraph. For example, XYZ change dot dot dot. However, one continuity was ABC and so on. This will help demonstrate that you are actually thinking about the implications here. Another example are the compare and contrast essays. And here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you include at least a similarity and difference at the end of every paragraph. So. You might say something like XYZ similarities. However, one difference is ABC. And finally, for the cause and effect questions, you can have at least one therefore statement at the end of every body paragraph and say something along the lines of XYZ happened. Therefore, ABC consequence of XYZ happening. So the word therefore is a really key phrase when it comes to making sure that you're providing a thorough and specific response to your reader. 
Tip 10 is to remember that sourcing is only earned when you are able to demonstrate specificity as well as significance. This means discussing historical content, audience, purpose, or point of view. You do not earn it by making general statements. Which leads us to tip 11, which is when you're sourcing, you only need to demonstrate one of the sourcing skills on each document in order to earn points. You don't need to say every single part of half in order to get the point requirement here. Our next tip is to try sourcing at least four or five documents. This is so that you can be safe in case you're wrong about one of your interpretations. Tip 13 is to make sure that you're giving specific, historically relevant information from beyond what's being given to you in the documents. This is worth a full point on your DBQ. The next point is that when you're incorporating this outside evidence, make sure that it is actually from the same time period that you're writing about. Chronology and time periods are super important in order to earn this outside evidence point. Tip 15 is to understand that complexity is earned by introducing nuance into your essay. It's more than just using the word however to qualify an argument. It's considering the actual broader picture and implications of what's going on. Beyond talking about nuances, it can also be earned by talking about the contradictions between documents or historical events in relation back to your thesis. The easiest way for you to earn your complexity point is to do the opposite of the historical reasoning skill that's being asked of you. For example, if you're writing about change over time, you're going to want to talk about continuity over time. The College Board rubric describes this as explaining relevant and insightful connections within and across periods. If you're writing about comparison, you're going to talk about contrast. The College Board describes this as explaining both similarity and difference. If you're writing about causation, you're going to want to discuss the effects. And finally, if you want another way to earn this point, what you can do is you can try applying your argument to another time period and drawing a connection. If you do this, make sure that you're applying your entire argument to another time period. Our final tip for the DBQs is to try using words such as another time or another view or another way when you're trying to cue into your reader that you're attempting complexity. All right, so that's 17 DBQ tips. Like we said in the SAQ section, if you found this helpful so far, be sure to throw us a like on this video if you haven't already, and leave a comment as to which DBQ tip you found most helpful. Now let's head into the LEQ tips, which is the final part of this video. Now let's talk about five LEQ tips for the AP US History exam. The first one is to not fall into the trap of always only using the format of talking about social, economic, or political issues going on. Students have often fallen into this trap and overused this model when they could actually spend more time better understanding core AP US history themes and how they relate back to the question that's being asked of them. Point two is to make sure that you understand your time periods. Students lose a ton of points when they bring in information that is outside of the time period being asked of them, and they don't even know it at that time, and so they keep writing more and more in their essay using examples that are beyond the scope of the actual time period being asked of them. Tip three is to review the causes of key events in history and how the occurrence of these key events then changed society over time. This is that change in continuity over time concept and skill that's being assessed of you. For example, if you're thinking about Roe v. Wade, you might want to think about what led to it happening, what led to it happening up to the point, and then also what were the outcomes from Roe v. Wade actually happening moving forward in relation to women's rights. Tip four is to make sure that you're showing the why whenever you state a concept. Make sure that you are not just mentioning a concept, but actually relating it back and explaining to the reader how it ties to your thesis and advances your argument. Our fifth tip when it comes to the long essay question is to remember that when you're writing about change over time, that you're also discussing continuity. Students often forget the continuity component and only talk about change over time. Now here are three additional APUSH resources you may find helpful in your exam prep, like we promised at the beginning of the video. The first one is College Board's AP Central. Here you're going to find a ton of previously released exams, as well as scoring guidelines and rubrics that you can review at your own pace. And then the second resource is Albert's free AP US History Review Guide. This is a self-paced guide that you can use to help you prepare for your exam. And then the last resource is Albert's AP US History Review course. Here you're gonna find hundreds of original practice questions as well as free response questions and full length practice exams so that you can learn by doing, get immediate feedback and start practicing and building on your weaknesses. Finally, we'd love to hear from you. 
Which tip did you find most helpful? Leave a comment in the description and we'd love to hear from you. And also make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel because we're always giving more test taking tips that you may find helpful in your AP journeys. Other than that, that's it for this time. I'll see you next time.